Hi guys, I'm Aloysius. I'm the owner of Haunted Harbor Tours in Annapolis. And this is the second of my series on ghost stories from around the world. I'm limited by my location in the city of Annapolis. And I'm limited to only ghost stories that I can, I can tell of this city. And I also limit myself by historic accuracy and other things like that. And so what I have decided to do in this... <laughs> 2020 era is I'm moving international by putting one ghost story a week up on YouTube. And hopefully people will decide to subscribe and check in regularly for this content. This one right here is actually a very special one in that it is the third ghost story to show up chronologically in the Library of Congress's newspaper archives. The newspaper printing was in 1798. However, the story, the newspaper article, says that this actually, the events actually occurred in 1790. And it's, I think, one of the most beautiful ghost stories I ever read. I, I first found it four years ago while I was researching the ghost stories that I tell here in the city of Annapolis. But of course, I couldn't tell it here in the city of Annapolis. And now that I've moved into an international market, this ghost story is is perfect for this YouTube channel, this YouTube content channel. Um, and so if you like it, please remember to hit like and subscribe and, and join me for more. Now this story begins in St. John's Harbor in Antigua. It's down in the Caribbean and it's a ship called the Brute. And it's captained by a man named Samuel Oliver. And this ship departs Antigua. It is headed for England. That first night, a sailor claims that he saw an apparition, a ghost, aboard this ship. A man of some variety. He saw it in the form of a silhouette illuminated on the moon out in the deck of the ship. As this ship continues a few more people begin to see it and and this man the the first sailor to have witnessed this ghost was very very strongly opinionated that this ghost truly was was real and he was spreading it and fear began to grow on this ship but more and more people began to see this strange apparition as it appeared in various locations. And it began occurring that, uh, you know, the, the, the tales and the stories of this ghost aboard this ship that began at St. John's Harbor was gaining power. Many of the sailors were beginning to have their own encounters with this strange apparition. And eventually it's decided that the crew will stay on the deck of the ship and everybody will stay and watch for this apparition. And so now, some couple weeks into this voyage in the center of the Atlantic Ocean, all of the men sit out all night long watching for this apparition to appear. On the 20th night, a storm had been growing for days. And the storm was now on the ship. And these men waited out in the wet, probably cold and they were watching for this thing as lightning is actually going on all around them and that is the night the apparition appears again the main deck was accordingly walked by these heroes night after night without the ghost making an appearance having been upwards of 20 days at sea the weather in the night became boisterous the winds blew the thunder ruled awfully and the lightning flashed terrifically vivid. All hands were called up to afflict the ship by their labors. In the middle of their professional employ, the ghost again made its appearance. And it was now seen by the whole crew, the captain accepted. One of those employed on the quarter deck rushed forward towards the supposed phantom and the infant uh, the instant pardon me sometimes f's are or s's are drawn like f's in these old newspapers which is the case here 
The instant it seemed within his grasp, a swath of lightning, the most tremendous force, covered it from his light. So he's blinded by this lightning that's striking behind this ghost. This was seen by the men on the yards who were reefing several sails and who once and all declared it to be no other than the devil and sunk from the attempt of the sailor in a flash of fire. So now these sailors, they no longer believe it's a ghost. They believe the devil himself is on the deck of their ship. The idea that this is the devil comes from the fact that this this ghostly apparition vanished upon the strike of a bolt. You know, he brought lightning and fire down on the ship and was instantly gone. And also added to the fact that this devil is stealing food from the crew when they come onto the main deck. It's described in a very elegant way here a little later on. They were miffed their beef, biscuit, and grog. So these, this demon, this devil, is stealing their beef, their biscuit, and their grog. And that is clearly not the actions of a ghost. You know, what use does, does a ghost have for grog? And there's all kinds of strange occurrences, mostly things being going missing, particularly food. And so now... These sailors, all of the sailors, including the first mate of the ship, are claiming that the devil himself is on their ship and that the devil himself is bringing destruction to their ship and that he's stealing their food. So the captain is getting a little anxious. The crew seems to be descending into a madness. And he's discussing this with his first mate, who is insistent to him that there is a devil aboard this ship. And, you know, he's talking to other members of the crew, and they're like, no, you got to understand, this thing is stealing our food. It's appearing at night. It's vanishing on the strikes of lightning bolts. Like, this thing is real, man. And so the captain, trying to keep a level head he goes to the passengers the people who are paying for passage back to england he's discussing this with them and finally it's decided that the same as the sailors had tried and failed in the beginning they would stay up all night and everybody would watch the deck and see if this thing appears and again everybody on the deck this thing does not show up but again several things mostly food goes missing in that time the captain he sets a reward to anybody who can find this devil anybody who can bring him to light he has set a reward of money financial gain to anybody who finds him and the crew begin to hunt for the devil knowing that he's on this ship knowing that he's he's appearing so often they hunt everywhere and eventually the devil is found in a water barrel hiding and afraid you see it wasn't the devil it was a man seeking freedom a man who had been taken from his native land and forced into slavery this was a slave of the new world who was trying to return to his home the reason why unlike most ghost stories that you will see on my youtube channel i'm going to be posting these stories in a in a providable link however i don't feel comfortable providing this one because though it doesn't show the same racism of that era or later eras in particular it does use the italian word for black I obviously, that's not a word that's really should be used at all and, and has kind of left the common vernacular for good reason. And so when it deals with that, I'm just not going to put that word, I'm not going to, you know, expose anybody to that. This slaver was sending this man out on canoe to tear up some sort of um, seaweed, like crab weed. I don't know the purpose, but it must have had value if he was sending slaves out to harvest it. And this, this slave was actually kept out very late due to the storms. And the slaver told him, no, you got to go still make me my money. You got to go take it to St. John's Harbor and sell it. 
And so he goes out to St. John's Harbor and, you know, it feels as though his canoe is going to, is going to give out from under him and he's going to be pulled into the ocean. But eventually he makes it to St. John's Harbor and he sells the seaweed to the person. And now he's supposed to get back, but the sun is gone from the sky and he's kind of masked by darkness. And also... There's been terrible weather all week, and he's got to go along the shoreline to get back to where where his slaver lives. And he says, fuck that. <laughs> I ain't doing that. He instead, he gets into his canoe, and he starts looking for a ship. And he finds a ship that's talking about England and talking about heading next to England. And as he hears the crew of the ship discussing England, he sneaks aboard and he, he, he sets his canoe to, to just kind of drift. And so that it'll eventually drift up on shore and it'll be found and this slave will be soon dead. And so nobody was looking for this slave because everybody was going to assume that he had died. And so he was going to England with the intent of being able to make it back to his home, which probably would be a nearly impossible feat by land. However, the crew, on hearing this, now let me ask you this, what do you think the crew's response to this was? Do you think they decided to, to take him back and collect on what would have probably been a $100 bounty, which was a pretty good sum of money back then? Do you think they made him walk the plank? Well, actually, none of those are true. The, the, the crew celebrated this man. They lifted him up as a hero. They even gave him a, a title and name. He became known as Jack Ghost. They were not upset with him for making them believe that he was the devil or allowing them all of this incredible fear of the supernatural presence aboard the ship, but rather they felt overjoyed by the incredible nature of his escape. And they, they said, yes, <laughs> you know, you can ride this ship, but you can also, we'll take you on. You know, this slave had apparently, his slaver and he must have gone a couple of times to Liverpool, according to the article. And so the slave, now a free man, actually took a job aboard the Brute, and he lived on the Brute for uh, quite a few years, and he was quite successful aboard this ship. Now, I like to imagine that eventually he got down to somewhere near his home and he was able to make it back to his home. But also, I mean, honestly, a ship, you get an opportunity on a ship like this in the 1700s, you're probably not going to run into a, a more interesting, adventurous life. I mean, I, I, I really want to find more on Jack Ghost and find out what he did after. Because Jack Ghost is, I mean, such an incredible figure. And I love this story. I love this story so much. Because though, though this newspaper, this article does use the Italian word for black, which is reprehensible, and that word should no longer exist. I mean, it doesn't exist in our modern society. What, what makes this story so incredible is the fact that it deals with, with two of the quintessential things of the 1790s. The end of, Pir the end, you know, I mean, Antigua and, and this kind of nautical 1700 story right at the end of all of that. And also it deals with a man seeking freedom and getting it and obtaining it uh, in a new and interesting way, which to me, I mean, uh, really, really makes this an incredible heroic story. I love Jack Ghost. I've wanted to tell this story for years, and I'm so happy to now have a platform in which I can. Now, if you enjoyed this story, uh, please, 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 I'm early yet. Obviously, I'm doing what I can, and this is a bit of a... Um, a low budget enterprise, right? But if you hit like, subscribe, if you comment on my video, and you do all those things those you know successful YouTubers tell you to do, I will be able to grow, and I will be able to do things like go and film in St. Mary's, film the places, and tell the stories of the twelve Maryland witch trials. I'm also going to be streaming content, video games, dark macabre 
kind of uh, strange video games, either on Twitch or YouTube. Either way, it'll be under the same moniker, Haunted Harbor Tours. But please spread this. Help me grow because this is this is a a very scary time for me as a small business owner. Um, I don't know what my winter is going to be like, and I'm nervous, and I don't want to end up haunting this slummy-ass apartment. And so thank you all for joining me, and I look forward to scaring you next week.